Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here with the blog to watch. Today I'm excited to review the Gelfman IN16 Nixie watch. This is a timepiece that I have been uh, enthusiastically wearing uh, for basically as long as it's been in my possession and I've been tracking uh, the production and development of this watch for about 12 years now. Um, it's taken quite some time. It was a, quite the labor of love for Mr. Gelfman, who's the founder, who, who this is really his concept. There are other Nixie tube watches in the market, mostly hobbyist things. I would say this is the most uh, high-end for sure, uh, as well as sort of well thought out from a enthusiast collector's perspective, um, uh, Nixie tube watch. And there's sort of a lot of layers to the story. Uh, this very interesting timepiece that um, begins um, in Soviet Russia. And uh, in, in the 1950s, there's the Nixie tubes in action. In the 1950s, this thing called a Nixie tube, which invented, and it's essentially a fancy light bulb that has um, coils in there that are shaped like each of the individual digits. And when you put them together, they can come out with complex um, numeric displays. Um, and they were sort of made obsolete by the creation of screens. Uh, so those, you know, cathode ray tubes and, and all types of screens basically made these obsolete. But in the USSR, um, many of these Nixie tubes were made and used for a lot of military, industrial, and commercial purposes. Um, and a lot of these uh, old stock tubes are left, or some of them are left. A stockpile is owned by the owner of this brand, and he wanted to turn them into something for a wristwatch for a long time. He's a, a serious enthusiast and has been in the watch industry for a number of years. And uh, he wanted to make a Nixie tube watch, and it you know it takes a long time to do that because you're essentially making hardware. There is a there's a board in here, you know, an electronics board and software. Uh, you have a connector in the back here, which is it doubles as a data port, as well as a charging port, and uh, that connects to your computer. Um, you need that to update the time and the settings and things like that, as well as to charge the watch. But um, otherwise, it's it's wearing it is, is, is very nice and autonomous in terms of uh, the wearing experience. So this is a lot of things that went into this to make it a functioning gadget, as well as a nice uh, watch to wear. Um, this watch is about 46 millimeters wide in steel. Um, you have these, these are actually a mineral crystal um, over, it would just been too expensive, I think, for, to do these in sapphire crystal, this very special shape here. Um, nicely polished, hand polished, um, assembled in Moscow, interestingly. Um, makes sense given the fact that uh, the founder is obviously uh, f from Russia and a lot of these tubes, are, all the tubes were made there. So there's other elements to this. For example, it was, much of this was designed in Switzerland, um, but I think it's very interesting um, from a branding perspective. This watch is limited to a thousand pieces and we, we're not really sure what the company is going to do next. Um, IN16 is actually the designation for this Nixie tube shape and size. They're each about, I think about 13 millimeters uh, tall. So they're actually quite big, but there are many other ones. So will there be a wider display with four digits? Will there be other things with smaller Nixie tubes? Um, I'm not sure. I, I really don't know. And I'll sort of show you how this watch works in a minute here. Um, it does have one button and that's right here. And you can, you can push that to activate the time. So you see it begins there with hours, then minutes. Um, I can change that, right? So I can change those to being on for less than two seconds or longer. There's a lot of parameters in the software. Um, it also has an accelerometer. It's easier when you're wearing it, but let me try to do it there. Um, there you go. Um, so when you flick up your wrist, um, it turns on automatically there, which is very handy. It would, it, would, it would be kind of annoying if you had to push the button each time. It's kind of cool to lift your wrist up. Um, but if you push this down and you push it again, um, you're going to get the, uh, the date, um, and you're also going to get the charge, the battery level charge there. So this also has the date, and like I said, the battery charge, and there's different ways of programming that, like I said. So here's the limited edition number on the side there. Um, then you, of course, you have the, the brand. So this is really a cool-looking object. Um, integrated rubber strap here that's that's actually quite comfortable. It's got that, it's pr kind of thick, so it's got that, that, that double double buckle, or that double tongue element there it looks kind of cool. So there it is on the wrist. That is the, the Gelfman um, IN16 Nixie. Let me try to do the flick thing there. Um, it's kind of hard. You have to like lift it up. But I did it there on, 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 when I wasn't holding it. It just looks so cool. That orange glow. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention that you see there's sort of a purple glow there. These are LEDs and you can change the colors or turn it off altogether if you want. And also what's interesting here is there's a little dot here and that shows you 
which part of the number it is, right? So if you if you look at it just sort of an abstract, I want to do it on the wrist. I have to like lift it up. All right. <laughs> but it, it makes it easier to sort of read the time there. Um, I've been wearing this watch a lot. I found the battery life to be pretty good. Um, you know, I would say that if you use it a ton, you could probably get away with wearing it for a couple weeks at least without having to charge it. It has a 320 mAh size battery, I believe, but you could you could get away with wearing it for a fair number of time. Um, it is, look, it's a thicker watch, but it is snug on the wrist. I, 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 I found it very comfortable despite the interesting shape. People love the look of it. Um, and again, because it has an accelerometer, you know, it turns on kind of accidentally. And then some people see this glowing thing on your wrist, and which is amazing. Um, these tubes have a, a very long lifespan. The, the Soviet ones especially uh, were known to be Nixie tubes that were very durable and they lasted a long time. Um, so you should be able to wear this watch for many years without these, these going out but Gelfman has spare tubes, right? So if something were to happen to one of these, there are spares. Um, even though these aren't made anymore, they have a stockpile of them so that there can there can be servicing, which again, um, has been one of the questions. So I, I love this. Um, I've been a fan of Nixie tube watches uh, ever since uh, I sort of learned about the hobbyist ones. Uh, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple, was uh, I guess quite famous for being, being into Nixie tube watches before the Apple Watch came out, which he had to wear after that. And, and that was kind of an interesting nerd thing. So if you haven't heard about Nixie tubes, maybe you like them now. If you do, um, chances are you just sort of see the merit here. Um, there are less expensive, I'll call hobbyist grade um, Nixie tube watches. I haven't tried them out there um, that are less expensive, but as a luxury watch, there's uh, a lot of fun that goes into this slick software experience. Retail price for this limited edition of 999 pieces Gelfman IN16 Nixie watch is $7,878. You can see the full review on a blog to watch. Thank you.